previously on the I Spy Tie. Here are the five steps you can take right now to make your living abroad dreams a reality. Now let me introduce you to the place that I've called home for the last six years, Prague, Czech Republic. Here we are at the eastern entrance of the Charles Bridge, which dates back to the year 1357. As you enter, you'll notice that there are rows of statues dating back to various points of time. Now let me take you to my favorite statue, which is of John Nepomuk, a priest dating back to the 14th century. Let's go. Behind me here is one of my favorite statues on the Charles Bridge. It's the patron saint John Nepomuk from the late 1390s. It's said that Nepomuk refused to divulge the information of the Queen's confessional to the King, and unfortunately for him, it landed him right in the river where he drowned. <laughs> now, for more modern history, it's said that if you touch this statue, it's supposed to bring you luck. And you'll see here people all behind us touching it to the point where it's now rubbed off as gold. You will see statues of Nepomuk all over the country. He can be distinguished by the five stars in his halo. It's time to leave the bridge and now take you to the astronomical clock, which is a quick 10 minute walk. You can probably hear that ringing in the distance. So as you can tell, this is a huge tourist attraction. This is the astronomical clock dating back to the year 1410, the oldest astronomical clock still in use today. And what you can see here, this is a very rudimentary explanation. The astronomical clock is known for being very busy, so I'm going to drop in here and give you some of my favorite fun facts. The astronomical clock is an astrolabe that dates back to the year 1410 and is still accurate to this day. Can you believe that? Every hour on the hour, there's a little mechanical show that death comes out and strikes the hour to begin anew. Below the clock is the calendar plate, which I find so fascinating. Uh, the calendar plate contains 365 names of saints and their corresponding name day. Name days are a pretty big deal in the Slavic world, and what that basically means is, let's say for example your name is Ludmila. Your name day would fall on September 16th, and your friends and family would typically give you small gifts like candy, beer, bohemian sect, which is kind of like a Prosecco, and other sweet little treats. Look, I could go on and on and on about the astronomical clock, but you'll just have to come here and see it for yourself. Next up, we're going to walk into the Old Town Square and make our way to a very formidable statue. Here behind me is the statue of Jan Hus. People began shouting in the background, so I'm just going to bring it here. Jan Hus was a monumental figure in Czech history, and often on my tours, I would see people walk past the statue and have no clue who he was, so here we go. He was a Protestant reformer before Martin Luther with his most revolutionary works and preachings beginning in 1409, so the Czechs technically beat Germany at something. And Jan Hus was a revolutionary rebel with a proclivity to feminism, and his radical teachings ended with him being burned at the stake in 1415. Burned alive, writhing in agony. Now, boys and girls, what do you think that feels like? So, to add to that, um, Czechs have a very dark sense of humor. When I first learned about Jan Hus, they called him Roasted Goose because Hus, H-U-S, directly translates to goose, so <laughs> there's that. Don't joke about that. All right, let's head out of the Old Town Square and grab a bite to eat across town. Here comes my favorite mode of transportation, the trams. Now, I haven't driven a car in about six years, which is amazing, right? <laughs> so, let's go. Prague, hands down, has the easiest and most affordable public transportation that I've ever experienced. 
The monthly pass is about $25 and that includes the buses, trams, and the metro lines. If I'm ever feeling lazy, I'll definitely take a Bolt or an Uber to get to where I need to go quickly. Now it's time to have a traditional Czech lunch in one of my favorite restaurants, Olympia. Here we have our classic Czech beer. We have the Pilsner, which is a light beer. And we have my favorite, the Cherry Kosman. <laughs> Super. Now let's cheers. Nastravi. Nastravi is a common cheers here, which means to your health. And what better can you have when you have some of the best beer in the world? <laughs> Here we have some classic Czech dishes that you absolutely cannot miss when you're here in the country. We have the Pilsen goulash and one of my all-time favorites, the Spichkova. It's the perfect autumn or winter food because it fills you right up and for a Florida girl like me, this is completely different than what I'm used to. So, dobrohut! <laughs> and now to wash that meal down, the nice Becherovka. Nesteravi. Good. Uh, uh, uh. All right, y'all, as you can imagine, I am absolutely stuffed. I hope you enjoyed this short and sweet historical and cultural vlog. Until next time, Nesklatano! Up next on I Spy Thai. Here I am surrounded by life's memory set in stone, the Great Pyramids. <laughs> Okay, so we just did so much haggling for perfume. Okay, so now I'm about to dig into my first kosheri. Tell you how it tastes. Mom, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cuss. No, no. Now it's time to have one of a little bit of Okay. Ready? Here we are standing at one of the entrances of the Charles Bridge, which dates back to 1357. Oh god, I can't. This bright light. Yeah, it's too much. <laughs>